Yo, what's up guys? Inko here with the day four build update for the lightning strike poison. We're just gonna show some boss kills, go over those, let you guys watch Cirrus, and then we'll run a map and go over the changes to the build. Kind of stuff I want to stress. Right here, this is just a 30% uh, more life, infinite hunger, or however it gets boosted by the Atlas. Um, some key things I want to stress that I keep seeing in POVs, like common mistakes, and I do talk about this a little bit later. Please cap your spell suppression to 100%. There is a specific node, Revenge of the Hunted, that gives you 10% extra chance to suppress spell damage while on full life. You're not obviously going to always be on full life, so an easy way to test this is to grab a Blood Rage or look in POB. Um, just make sure you're not on full life and make sure you're still 100% spell suppression because that is a good chunk of your defense. Another thing, Blizzard Crown. Went over a lot of POBs where they don't have a Blizzard Crown. Blizzard Crown is a ton of damage added. The same can be said about the Focus Ailment Helmet Enchant and the Focus Glove Mod. The more attack speed you have, the faster you're stacking those poisons, the faster that damage is being dished out. Uh, same thing with the increased duration of Helmet Enchant. You are stacking those poisons longer, so you have a longer and faster ramp. A um, couple other things too. Make sure you are accuracy capped. There's actually quite a bit of POBs or profiles I've looked and they are not accuracy capped. So pay attention to your accuracy. Make sure you are looking at Lightning Strike and not Vol Lightning Strike. When you first import your character, if you have Vol Lightning Strike, it's going to say Vol Lightning Strike, which cannot miss. So it's always going to show 100%. So make sure you select Lightning Strike. Also nice uh, Grace Evasion carrying me hard right there. Um, but yeah, make sure that you're capped on accuracy. And you want to have a good Elemental Dagger, a lot of Elemental Damage, and Attack Speed and Crit. You can craft one or the other. And with all things, um, you know, make sure you cap your res, get chaos res where you can. Dots are deadly. We actually got chaos res into the build now. We're positive around like 20. So very important. Dots are definitely the deadliest thing to this build. And we're going to hop into some serious footage here in a second. I'll let you guys listen into that. I'm just going to do the third phase and the final phase because, I mean, everything else is pretty much boring and the same. So, yeah, I'll let you guys watch that. I'm just checking to see it's on my filter here. But yeah. Enjoy the series, and then we'll go over the changes and a map gameplay. Really interesting enough to warrant all this pain. Beyond, there is only horror. This city is nothing. I love that, dude. Look at the the fucking flagellant. Well, not flagellant. The flash filling from the storms. Shit's so OP. Let's. Hey, serious? I don't have it on my Quicksilver. Oh, I have it on my other one. Yeah, I need to recraft that. Fucking debuff, dude. Jesus. Oh, you caught it with Thread of Hope. Alright, so we'll hop into a map here. Push. We're going to immediately rush to the boss. Um, Strat for the altars. Oh, man. Alright, well, I got to do this. Cool scarabies. Okay. So if you rush to the boss and kill the boss, I'm specced for Eater of World stuff. So basically doing this, um, unfortunately we did proc an altar here, but this is still good. We still did get scarabs from minions. It removes uh, the chance for you to get boss mods from the altars. And so it, it does create like this little, you know, backtracking. 
but it's 100% worth it. So now you only get like the player and the minion stuff. The minion stuff is super nice. You get scarabs, currency, um, their perspective, eldritch currency is very nice and definitely worth it. Yeah, we just been, oh, perfect. Do you see those grasping vines there? Um, something I want to talk about. They can be very annoying. I don't know, I'm trying to actively pay attention now. If I get them again, show you guys. Eh. Anyway, if you get grasping vines, um, whichever movement ability that you may be using, whether that be flame dash or frost blink, use it and it'll remo immediately remove all of those grasping vine stacks. So you're not like pain champing trying to get out by running or whirling blades. Definitely clicked the wrong one there. That's fine. Yeah, as you see, rushing the boss is very nice. There's all these minions and all the altars you're going to get now. Oh, hey, me and I. Um, <clears throat> they're going to be selected for the perspective minion. But this one, nah. Like, implicit. But this is good. Duplicate scarabs. Because we already have scarab nodes selected from the minions. Shout out to uh, Palsteron, by the way. I stole that tech. Rushing, rushing the boss. Wasn't really anything good on that one. <clears throat> so we just picked it. Then we will also show a metamorph because I'm currently spec on that for the Atlas tree. Uh, we've been testing a bunch of stuff. I'll also leave a link to my Atlas tree below. But like I said, it's it's ever changing because we're testing a bunch of different stuff. So, right now we are farming. Uh, Eater of Worlds is always going to stay. I'm always going to be farming this boss because it's the better of the two. Expedition's always going to stay. Harvest while, we'll craft, while we are crafting our gear. Essences are very good also to craft our gear, especially our wand and that. So this is going to stay for a while, and I don't really mind them anyway. You know, some people, you know, not the biggest fan. You can definitely drop stuff where you want. This might be pain. Okay, so there I took one. I was greedy. Uh, it was duplicate. But now, now our resistances are, uh, you know, we'll see how this metamorph goes. Well, we have two. We have two to make because of the node. I don't remember. I don't know what's on the map. Mind you, too, why this metamorph seems omega tanky. Uh, there is a node that gives it 150% more life. So, it's also a T16 map. Uh, reduce effective curses. That one affects our damage a good bit. It's mainly that they just have giga health. Okay, can't make another one. Alright, so. Some things I want to talk about that I, I keep seeing with uh, going over POBs, looking at people's builds. First off, with leveling, even though the daggers are back down to... The Manic Dagger base is already at 40, 50 C, down to that. But if you're still leveling the build, you don't have money, you know, you're fresh to playing the game, playing the league, uh, you can still level this build with Fizz Daggers and using... Make sure you get Adder's Touch. Uh, either way, you're going to be against the poison capped. 
but this will always make sure on crits that you crit the enemy and that's very easy with ungles and the nodes and assassin inherently so you want to do that you want to use you can start with like the mighty flay dagger any fizz dagger uh fizz daggers from the temple is really good it has increased fizz and fizz is extra chaos and then from there you'd be looking for like attack speed flat uh crit chance stuff like that and your main links uh, i'll leave a comment in the description to pin it people still playing the build and leveling you know just quit pain champ it through with helix uh actually have a lot of people that swapped this from helix and they said it's much better don't be sad he's actually uh playing in ssf2 and he's gotten through the bosses and everything no problem i tested it on a t16 map on a five link and we went through no problem too so just quit using helix start using lightning strike uh get pierce as soon as possible uh, just from the tree or you know helmet enchant anomalous fall lightning strike on your gloves stuff like that and use a temple dagger or a taproot a taproot is also very great very common very cheap and you're going to be able to get through all the content no problem until you get your dagger and then start getting into the elemental version and scaling and essentially double dipping and crazy damage changes uh updated the dagger they'll have to make a better one this one's just okay um for the helmet we changed we got some spell suppression that's about it feels the same chest we got into a sacrificial garb um when you're buying these i recommend getting the cards the sacrifice and then you can split it before influence you cannot split influence items so do it before which is what i did and i gave the other one to a friend and then i hunter slammed it and just reforging caster until i got additional curse and some life i still have to change the suffixes in that but that's later uh just a despair ring nothing special this is just a eh, chaos essence crafted ring nothing really special there just to get some chaos res boots are the same gloves i opted to change the pierce to chance to suppress spell damage and ungles we are now using corruption for the anoint i still have to get crit uh catalyst on here we're also using divergent elemental damage with attacks the reason why we're doing this is we are now in clusters and this lets us save two points we get Mana Leech here. And then we are in a cluster setup. Glamis, Feed the Fury, and Martial Prowess. Feed the Fury, we get the Leech with Life. And then this jewel gives us the mana. <clears throat> so we can drop Clever Thief. This is also very nice, giving us accuracy in that. Another thing I see a lot of people when I look at their POBs in that, they are not accuracy capped. Make sure you are accuracy capped. Um, turn that on. Make sure you're accuracy capped. If you're looking at Vault Lightning Strike, and when you first import to POB, it's going to show Vault Lightning Strike. Vault Lightning Strike cannot miss. It's always going to show 100%. Make sure you select Lightning Strike and you're looking at it. And make sure you're suppression capped. Key thing I want to say. You double check, because there is this node right here, Revenge of the Hunted. There, you have 10% chance to suppress spell damage while in full life. You're not always going to be full life. So, you know, in, in the hideout, you might be looking, you're like, Oh, I'm 100% spell suppression capped. Okay, that's great. But if I do this, because I know where my cap is right now, and then I put on Blood Rage to take me from full life. Oh, wait. What? I'm no longer capped. Weird. That's because of the node, so you have to make sure that you are capped without this node. Uh, other things, the helmet enchant, a blizzard crown is insane damage. I see people opting for getting, you know, the helmet enchant on a bad base. Don't do that. You're going to get way more damage spending three points and taking this and using a blizzard crown. Get this. Get the focus mod. That is a bunch of damage on single target. Same thing with this one. Attack speed anywhere is very, 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 very good for this build. Because the faster you're attacking, the faster you're stacking your poisons, and you have those poisons lasting longer. That's how you get that good ramp. And as far as the tree, I also recommend these medium clusters. We are using Student of Decay to get some Chaos Res. Because dots are very annoying in this build. We're obviously missing still a good chunk of Chaos Res. But versus minus 60 to 16, I can gladly say that dots aren't really affecting me much anymore. Um, They're definitely deadly early on. So yeah, these are very nice. And early on, I also opted to take one with evil until I got into clusters. Because I was tired of dots. So we have two of those, uh, just regular attack speed, um, poison, and life nodes, or life jewels there. And then Enduring Composure. We take Enduring Composure to get Endurance Charges to be more tanky. 
Uh, right now unbuffed like 8,300 and 16k evasion. Pop our flasks for buffs. We are at 16k, 26k. Because obviously with no um, endurance charges also. And we're still leveling some gems. So pretty good defenses. That's pretty much the changes. We're also using Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh to get Toxic Delivery. So we technically have uh, five Ascendancy nodes. So yeah, that's pretty much the key things I want to talk about. 100% um, make sure you get Pierce. If you're leveling with Spectre Helix, stop. Go Lightning Strike, go Fizz, get a Taproot, get a Temple Dagger. Um, you're going to have a better time. Make sure you get Pierce. Blizzard Crown, Focus and Chance are big for the build. Make sure your accuracy is capped. Make sure your spell suppression capped. Uh, if you're dying and you want to like, you know, ask me questions or whatever, Shadow Play can help a lot. Use Shadow Play, re-record um, when you die. That way I can see like what you die to or what you're dying to. Like I said, generally the, the most common that I think people might be dying to early on are dots. And uh, make sure your ailment immune to stuff gets Peruna as soon as possible for Brian King. That's going to give you freeze immunity. And that is from a toll map. So you use a toll map with a divine vessel. Go capture it. Give it to Sin. Pantheon is now upgraded. You now have cannot be frozen. We have chill immunity from a boost from the craft. I also have burning ground immunity. Because burning ground is just annoying. And I used to be farming Exarch. And there is some pretty annoying burning ground mods that you could get. But your miner, you can really use whatever you want. You can use, you can use Shakira Shakira. This cannot be blind, cannot be maimed. And another thing is map mods. There is a specific map mod where it's like 60% of just effective non curse auras on you. That is going to kill your grace, determination, and defiance banner. You're going to be more squishy. Uh, and the same thing with like precision and that your accuracy. There's another mod where less accuracy and um, reduced chance to poison. All those are not fun for the build. Cannot be leech, can be annoying. Uh, no regen, just slap in a mana flask. I always keep one in my inventory, an enduring mana flask, and I use it on those maps. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, anything about the build, go in the Discord, you can ask there. You can ask in the stream, just the comments. I will also pin a comment, letting people know that they should level with just going Fizz LS because it is much better. I tested in a T16 map on a 5 link, clear it, and it's fine. And definitely way better than Spectre Helix because Spectre Helix is pretty annoying in maps. Like, it's very good going through the campaign because of the base damage it gets. But in maps, it causes, like, backtracking. And even with Plague Bear to help with clear, it was just kind of pain. But, yeah. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, current POB of the build and that and everything will be in the description. Watching, guys. And take care.